Hey everyone, welcome back to Sarah's Vegan Kitchen. I hope you're doing well. I've been getting some questions about why I dropped the kitchen from my channel name. Uh, I just wanted to leave some room to maybe upload some content that's not related to food, maybe fitness, maybe general lifestyle, but you know, I may well add the kitchen back to the name just cause it has that, has that ring to it. But today's video is gonna be another what I eat in a day video. Uh, just regular vegan, no labels. I don't eat a perfect diet by any means, but I try to eat on the healthy side. So we'll see where this takes us. This video is sponsored by Four Sigmatic. I'll say a little bit more about that in a moment because they are having a big winter sale. You can get up to 50% off of select products. And then I also have a code, which I'll have in the information box. that will get you an additional 15% off. I'm gonna start out my day by making a cup of coffee. I was, I was going through a phase. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know where I was having energy drinks in the morning. And I'm trying to reel that back in and make it an occasional thing. So I am still incorporating some caffeine on days that I work out, which is today. So I'm gonna have some coffee. I've really been enjoying the Four Sigmatic Mushroom Coffee Latte. This has some coconut milk powder in it, so you don't have to add anything but water. But today, since I have some oat milk in my fridge, I think I'm gonna make my own kind of latte using their adaptogen coffee. And then I'm gonna foam up some oat milk. I have my milk frother here. This is my favorite oat milk. I mentioned this in my favorite products review, which if you missed that, I'll have linked down below. But I put this directly into this pitcher. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of water. And then I'm actually just gonna add the packet of the mushroom coffee directly into the frother as well. So this adaptogen one has Tulsi and ashwagandha in it as well as the mushrooms. And it has like a slight cinnamon flavor. I normally don't like cinnamon, but I feel like in this amount, it's good. If you're worried about these coffees tasting like mushrooms, don't worry. So these packets have 50 milligrams of caffeine in them, which is the perfect amount for me. The energy drinks <laughs> that I was uh, getting into were like 200 milligrams a piece, and then I'd feel super anxious by the middle of the day. We don't want that. But this is gonna give me a little boost for my leg day workout today. Okay, we're gonna froth that up. So our drink is ready. I don't know, you're not gonna be able to see it, but I'll give you a, a close up. Do you see that? It's so good. <laughs> So nice to have a warm beverage. It's been snowing kind of often this past week in Colorado where I live. I grew up in California. It snows not my favorite thing. It wouldn't be so bad if I weren't so god awful at driving and having snow on the ground just heightens my driving anxiety. And then I end up just kind of hermiting myself in my house all week. <laughs> But um, it's fine, we're gonna make the best out of it, have some cozy meals. I think I'm gonna make pancakes for breakfast, so I'm gonna sip on this, browse through Pinterest, see if I can find myself a good gluten-free vegan pancake recipe to try. Okay, before I get into breakfast, I wanted to talk briefly about our sponsor for Sigmatic's winter sale. It's going on now, it's gonna end on February 16th. So if you've been wanting to try out or restock on any of their products, a lot of their most popular ones are gonna be on sale up to 50% off, including some of their bundles. And I'm also gonna have a link in the description box. It'll get you an additional 15% off. Now I've worked with them a couple times before, but if you are unfamiliar, I wanted to share a couple of product re recommendations, some of my favorite things. My go-to Four Sigmatic products are their instant coffee packets. They also sell ground mushroom coffee if you wanna use your coffee machine or do a pour over. But these come in little packets. You just add them to water or milk if you like. They have some coffees with mushrooms and some with adaptogens. These are things that have been used for centuries in Ayurveda and Chinese medicine, and they're kind of trending now. So you can browse their website. It's really easy to navigate and you can kind of sort by the types of benefits that you might be looking for. So I typically will have the mushroom coffee Coffee with the cordyceps and chaga before I go to work out, just because cordyceps is said to help kind of boost and sustain energy levels. Then we have the adaptogen mix, and then there's another mushroom coffee that contains lion's mane, which is said to be better for focus. As far as the added mushrooms go, like I said before, they don't taste like mushrooms. They add a little bit of flavor to the mixture, but mostly you just get the flavor of the coffee. And then they also have a couple different lattes with the added coconut milk powder to help make it creamy, and these are very lightly sweetened as well. So my favorite of those is the coffee one because I just love coffee but they also have a really good matcha latte as well as a golden latte and a chai. Sometimes if I want something 
not caffeinated at the end of the night. I'll have their reishi hot chocolate. It's really good, lightly sweetened, and it, reishi is supposed to help you kind of wind down at the end of the day. So I'll have the sale information down below and my 15% off link. Hopefully any of you who have been wanting to try out some Four Sigmatic or restock can take advantage of the sale. And um, you know what, on the topic of mushrooms, I have actually been doing some research on how to grow them at home. I ordered a couple of um, spore syringes. I don't know, I thought it'd be a fun project. I've been seeing a lot of innovative ways to, to cook with these mushrooms, especially lion's mane. Like I saw a lion's mane po' boy and it seems really tasty. So um, if I have any success, I'll share it with you. Maybe I'll show you my little setup in a future video, but I don't know, I'm not 100% confident that it'll work out. I have killed almost everything I've tried to grow. All of my house plants, all of my gardening attempts. Actually, I did get a couple of zucchinis and some cucumbers, a couple of peppers. Yeah, we'll see. Anyway, let's go make breakfast. So we're gonna make pancakes for breakfast. I'm borrowing this recipe from Minimalist Baker, so I'll link it down below in case this piques your interest. It's gluten-free and it's got bananas in it. I made some oat flour, literally just threw some oats in my Vitamix and pulverized them. And then I also have this gluten-free flour blend. This is my favorite one. It's by Bob's Red Mill. And I also have a little bit of almond flour. I cut the recipe on her blog in half, so. Oat flour. All purpose. Melvin. Don't you dare walk into my tripod. I'm sorry, I have no snacks for you right now. Almond flour. Recipe calls for cinnamon. I don't really like it, so I'm not gonna put that in. A Little bit of salt. I'm gonna whisk it up. And I've got an overripe banana here that I'm just gonna mash directly in. Recipe calls for coconut oil, melted, but I'm just gonna use a little bit of grapeseed oil because that's what I have. And then a little bit of liquid sweetener using agave. And then we're adding some milk. I'm using this unsweetened vanilla macadamia milk because I don't really like it for other purposes. So I'm just trying to use it up. There's exactly a cup left. Oh, totally forgot to add baking powder. That's important. Quite a hefty amount of baking powder actually. That should be everything for the base. I'm out of vanilla extract. I keep forgetting to buy it. I use it all for Christmas baking. <laughs> I'm gonna get this pan preheating. I'm gonna add in some chopped walnuts and probably a few chocolate chips. I think I'm gonna stir the walnuts into the batter, but then I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna sprinkle the chocolate chips on top after I've scooped the batter out onto the skillet. I'm gonna chop them up a little bit. Wait, do you like walnuts? I like everything. Should I leave them out? I like everything. Okay. Good boy. Our batter's ready. I'm gonna move you back over here. So you can supervise the cooking process. So I've got this on like medium, slightly above medium heat. I'm gonna put in a little bit more oil. Just brush it around. I like to use a cookie scoop for pancakes. It makes makes it clean up easier. I have not tried this recipe yet, but I presume that it's gonna turn out well because I don't think I've ever tried one of her recipes that hasn't turned out well. We've got the Trader Joe's chocolate chips. These are my favorite, or amongst my favorite vegan-friendly chocolate chips, but be warned their chocolate chunks are not vegan-friendly. I think they have dairy in them. So just the chips. I'm gonna put like five per pancake. And I'm pushing them down into the batter so that when I flip them, the chocolate doesn't melt onto the pan and then burn, which sometimes happens. I'm gonna zoom you in so you can see. We inspect. This one's ready. Nice. Did you eat one of the burnt ones? I did, yeah. Does it taste burnt? No. They're really good. Good. Not super sweet. 
I tend to think that all pancakes and waffles require butter. So I'm gonna add a little bit. This is the, um, oh, this is cream cheese. Incorrect. They come in the same size package, that's why. This is the plant-based buttery spread by Simple Truth Organic. It's pretty good. So on their own, they're not super sweet. All the sweetness comes from the bananas and then just a little bit of whatever liquid sweetener you used. And chocolate chips. And chocolate chips, but I didn't put that many. So I am gonna add a little bit of maple scissor to enhance my experience. Can you try it like this too? The combination of maple syrup and butter. Hello. This is the first time you've been on the channel since you cut your hair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I kind of just miss Aunt Jemima syrup or log cabin syrup, you know what I mean? I don't remember really using that. That's all I used. Mm. I don't think I had real maple syrup until like college. Maybe if I ever went to a brunch place they give me real maple syrup, maple syrup. They give you real maple syrup at like Denny's or yeah, IHOP. I, I don't think so. I like log cabin. Never eaten at Denny's. Really? All right. I would recommend this recipe to you. Once again, I'll have it linked down below. I'm probably gonna eat two of these and then go to the gym once I've digested. Lots of carbs. Hey guys, okay, so let's talk about lunch. Normally I would be having a post-workout protein shake, but it's snowing, I'm really cold, I don't want anything cold right now, so we're just gonna skip that, have a, kind of like an extra big lunch. So I've got a random assortment of leftovers from the past couple days, and I'm just gonna kind of go over everything. I'm gonna insert some overlay footage because I did film myself making these recipes. Um, then I'm gonna try to remember all the steps that went into them. So first here we have some Kung Pao chicken. Doesn't look super glamorous. I feel like leftovers, my leftovers at least, rarely do. But for this I use the Morningstar chicken strips, the lightly seasoned ones. I think those are now my favorite vegan chicken, like plain chicken substitute. I prefer these to the Gardein ones. The texture's a little bit firmer and it holds up better in leftovers. The Gardein ones kind of get mushy. So in here I've got some onions. Usually I'd use green onions, but again, it was snowing out and I did not want to go to the grocery store that day. So I just used regular white onion, some red bell pepper. Then I had some broccoli and I threw some of that in just so I could get some greens in. Used my big nonstick wok to cook this and I started out by sauteing or stir frying the onions. And then I added in my broccoli because it takes a little bit longer to cook. And then my red bell peppers and the garlic. And once all of those things were tender, I added in my chicken strips and my water chestnuts. The sauce for this, I was actually missing a couple ingredients. Usually I use like white, like a dry white wine, but didn't have any, so I ended up using mirin, which is not really the same thing. For the sauce, I used toasted sesame oil, a little bit of brown sugar, some soy sauce, of course, some sambal chili paste, then the mirin and a little bit of rice vinegar. Added a little bit of water and then a couple teaspoons of cornstarch and whisked that all together. So when all my vegetables were tender, my meat was a little bit browned. I added in my sauce and cornstarch mixture and then just kept stirring until it had thickened up. Then I ended up eating this the other day with rice. So I have some leftover jasmine rice. I love water chestnuts. Okay, so I'm gonna Heat up a little bit of this with rice, and then, just for some extra veggies, I made some cauliflower wings the other day. I watched the Democratic debate and ate cauliflower wings and did a puzzle. I've made cauliflower wings on my channel before, but it has been quite a while, but I had a sudden hankering for them because I went to a Super Bowl party and it reminded me, oh yeah, cauliflower wings are a thing. Took a whole large head of cauliflower, cut them all into florets, I tend to go on the smaller side so they cook faster and get more tender. I don't really like when the center of my cauliflower is crunchy. And then at this point, I just eyeball the ingredients for the batter. I don't measure anything. You can use any kind of flour. I usually use chickpea flour just cause it's high in protein and I like the texture of it. Then for spices, I added in some onion powder, garlic powder, paprika. This time I added in some nutritional yeast as well to make it a little bit more savory, some salt and lots of pepper. 
uh, whisk that all together, all the dry ingredients, and then add in your liquid. I used, I think, unsweetened plain soy milk. You can actually use water, doesn't really matter. Just added that in gradually until I had kind of a thick pancake batter texture. And then for the rest of the liquid, I added in some Frank's Red Hot Sauce. You whisk all that together and you have just a medium pancake batter consistency. I try to get out all of the lumps then you can individually dip the florets into the batter and uh, transfer them to a lined baking tray, but I just tend to throw all of the cauliflower florets in and give them a big toss with my hands. They don't need to all be 100% covered, just all of them need to have a little bit of the batter on there, and then I dump it all out onto my tray. I line it with a silicone baking mat because the batter can uh, tend to stick quite a bit. I, use a, I cook them in a 425 degree oven for 20-25 minutes until the batter has, uh, I don't want to say hardened up, what do, I, what do I mean? The batter's not raw anymore, and then they're dry to the touch. And then I take them out, melt a little bit of vegan butter. This It's optional, but I like to add the butter. I find it, it helps the cauliflower wings crisp up a little bit. So I melt some butter and mix it with more Frank's Red Hot, toss my battered cauliflower wings into that mixture, give them a good toss, coat them, back onto the tray, then back into the oven for an additional 20, 25 minutes until that has dried out again. And then in the meantime, I decided to throw together a quick cashew ranch. It didn't end up being ranch exactly because I realized I was missing some of the ingredients, but I happened to have some soaked raw cashews in my fridge because I had soaked a bunch of cashews to make some dips for my Super Bowl recipes, which I filmed, but then I didn't end up having enough time to edit them to upload before the Super Bowl. So next year I'll be more on top of that. But anyway, I had some soaked cashews, pureed those in a blender with a little bit of extra water, added some onion powder, some garlic powder, a little bit of uh, powdered lactic acid, which is an ingredient that I love for simulating cheese or buttermilk. I do have a cashew ranch dressing that I'll link down below on my blog. I usually add some either fresh or dried chives to that. I realized I was, was out of freeze-dried chives, so I ended up just using some basil and parsley. So not quite the same as ranch dressing, but it was still it was still good with the wings. Lots of salt and pepper in that. So I have some leftover dressing here to dip my wings in. If I wanted to do it right, I would probably crisp these up in my air fryer, but I'm feeling a little lazy for that. So I'm probably just gonna throw all my leftovers onto one plate and microwave them. They're actually not bad cold either. So that's gonna be my hodgepodge of leftovers lunch. I'm gonna check back in with you for dinner. I'm gonna be making a big batch of like Cajun spiced beans and some seasoned rice. So that should be tasty. I will see you then. Hey mister, do you love the snow? What are you doing? I'm gonna get you. You don't care. <laughs> okay, for our spiced beans, we've got half of a white onion that I chopped lots of garlic, couple stalks of celery. I've got a pretty big green bell pepper that I diced up. Then I'm gonna be browning separately some hot Italian Beyond sausage. I think I'm just gonna use the entire package. I'm gonna chop it up like this. So I'm gonna saute all the veggies first till they're a little bit tender. And then over here, Earlier today, we already made a pound uh, a pound dry of red kidney beans that we're gonna be using. If you use the Instant Pot, you don't have to soak them. I just use the bean slash chili function and put enough water to cover them. I think I actually overcooked them. They're very soft, a little softer than I'd like, but I'm sure they'll still be fine. Okay, so here we've got, I just put all of the vegetables in at the same time and I'm going to saute them until they're tender, at which point I'm gonna add in my beans and my spices. And over here separately, I am browning off my Italian sausage. I like to do it separately instead of just cooking it all together just so I can blot off a little bit of this excess oil. There's quite a bit as you can see. I'm also making some rice. I've got the other half of that white onion diced up with some garlic. My, I think this is just jasmine rice. I'm not sure, some sort of long grain rice. Um, I've got chicken bouillon cubes that I'm gonna throw in. 
little bit of the Country Crock vegan butter. That's gonna be really nice savory rice to serve with the beans. We're adding in our beans. Let's see, how many should we add? Probably like, uh, all of it, <laughs> I guess. It's occurring to me that I should have saved a little bit of bean cooking liquid, but that's fine. Bean I'll juice. add a little bit of bean juice, if you will. I'll add a little bit of water, perhaps. Or maybe some vegan chicken broth. Now I've got a pre-blended salt-free Cajun Creole seasoning. This has, um, this has paprika, onion, garlic, black pepper, some lemon, some chili pepper, allspice, thyme, cloves, mace, red pepper, and bay leaf. So lots of things. Uh, if you have all those, you can just blend your own individually, but I'm just gonna use this. Couple teaspoons in there, a little bit of salt. There's already black pepper in the seasoning blend, so we'll skip that. Add in a little bit of water. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover these, let it stew. On the back here, I have my onions and garlic going, and I'm gonna add in my rice and my vegan chicken bouillon cube. We're gonna do a cup of rice, one bouillon cube, and my water. And uh, you cook this just like regular rice, bring it up to a boil, make sure your bouillon is dissolved before you cover it and reduce your heat and steam it. Quick bean update. I ended up adding a little bit of extra water. I added one of those chicken style vegan bouillon cubes. And then I added a little bit extra onion powder and garlic powder just to make it more savory because I felt like the, the Cajun seasoning blend that I used was a little light on those. I am glad it seems to be thickening up a little bit. I just had this on low simmering covered while my rice cooks. And I also have my sausage that I browned up and I'm just continuing to blot it on paper towel until I can mix everything together. Hey guys, it's the following night. I am currently editing this video and I wanted to hop back in just to wrap it up. I showed you what I had for dinner. And then for dessert, I had intended to make mango coconut sticky rice, but then I ended up feeling kind of lazy. So probably make that tonight for dessert, but I ended up just making a couple of the Simple Truth organic uh, chocolate chip cookies, the plant-based ones. Uh, we had a friend over watching a movie with us, so I made four instead of our usual just two for Eric and myself. Um, that's everything that I ate. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I want to continue with this more frequent upload schedule and aim for like twice a week. So um, if you have any recipes or video topics you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to leave those down below. And thank you again to Four Sigmatic for sponsoring today's video. Make sure to check the link in the information box below for more information about their winter sale. It's going on through the 16th of February. Again, a lot of their products are up to 50% off and then you can get an additional 15% off using my link. I hope that you have a fantastic week and I will see you soon. Bye.